So, the Winter Olympics are being held in Italy, which, when you look at the place, seems to be a bit too... warm. That's why we're in Norway, a proper winter country. And we've got some proper winter sports lined up for you. So, welcome then to the Top Gear Winter Olympics. It's the Winter Olympics. Speed it up a bit. Right, we'll begin with the biathlon. Now, normally, this is a combination of skiing and shooting. But since this is top gear, we'll be driving and shooting. Let's start by meeting the contestants. I shall be using this, the new Audi Q7. Audi's first attempt to make a school run 4x4. You see, the Q7 is based loosely on the Porsche Cayenne, but with all the really hardcore off-road stuff taken out. So it's a bit like having your big snow boots made by that Jimmy Shoes bloke. It's a full three inches longer than a Land Rover Discovery, and it's a full three percent uglier than a Troll. But there are some good things about it. It has a very, very good V6 three-liter diesel engine, an excellent gearbox, and most importantly, it has seven seats. And the price for this, the three-liter diesel SE, just under forty thousand pounds. Very good. The second sort of semi-off-roader for families. But what's the point of being second? That's like driving around in Buzz Aldrin. I'd much rather have Neil Armstrong. So, here he is, the car I'll be using as I bid for Olympic gold. It's the Volvo XC90. This was the first seven-seat 4x4 designed by someone who had children, not by an engineer who read about them in a book. It's a brilliant car, it really is. It's not mumsy, it's not British. It's like the family pet. It's like having a faithful old Labrador. There's more too. It's got a smooth new diesel engine. It's more spacious than the Audi and it's £4,000 cheaper. So, which is best? The Labrador or Buzz Aldrin? Well, that's what we're going to find out in our biathlon. The rules are very simple. You drive three kilometers around the course, stop, shoot at five targets, and there's a five second time penalty for every miss. Yeah, then we do another three kilometers on another course, come back here, shoot at the target again, this time lying down in the back of the cars, then it's a sprint to the finish. Uh, the winner, that'll be me, gets gold, and the loser gets to eat some golden snow. <laughs> to catch him up. Jeez. I love the Winter Olympics, me. He would, because Captain Slow was now well ahead. I don't want to eat golden snow. Nice bumpy. to eat 6,000 calories a day, 6,000. That's the equivalent of two pounds of butter, 70 slices of bread, 112 eggs, 86 tubs of yogurt, 28 potatoes, 117 biscuits, and 21 twist bars. That means I could be an Olympic biathlete. a mile off, James had already arrived at the shooting ranges. Magazine. In. 
Now your real biathlete arrives here with his heart doing about 180 beats per minute. And he has to time this with his heartbeat and his breathing. Machine pistol. Okay, fully automatic. Eat lead, Olympic target. Oh, yeah. Staggeringly, I missed the lot. So that was a five second penalty for each one. Oh, 25 seconds a week! I arrived back at the rifle range, and this time we had to fire lying down from inside the car, which meant dropping the rear seats. Okay. That's it. In the Q7, it was a dot. I pressed that. That's it. Take cover. So with James thundering along, I was back in the penalty box. Stevie Wonder could have done better! Good luck! That's a hey, boy! That's excellent. But then James stopped thundering and started crashing. James is off. Yes! I mean, no, oh no. Come on! 
know that one hill to the captain's slow, despite what we both thought was rather a poor car. Not only is it ugly, but the air suspension is too complicated and the seat layout is all wrong. Still, it didn't change the outcome. You are clear. It's your rules. <laughs> I would like to do the thing of for crawling through the rock. Anyway, you've probably noticed that TV's Richard Hammond isn't with us today, and that's because he's currently appearing on commercial daytime television. Yes, he is. He's on live every afternoon, three for the green slot. Ah. Uh, the thing is, before we start entertaining the unemployed and the elderly, uh, we gave them a taste of what life would be like out here. Yes, in the least, actually. This is the Motor Industry Research Association. Here, cars are tested to destruction. And in this chamber, they can recreate the freezing temperatures of the North Pole. It's the perfect place for a Top Gear experiment. Namely, who breaks first in extreme cold? Car or man? The car we've chosen is a Citroen C1, one of the most basic vehicles you can buy. And the man it's going up against is also pretty basic. Me. According to a top frostbite boffin, the experience would not be pleasant. Uh, so the minus 30, you know, the whole trouble with this sort of car. Ice crystals start to form in the tissues of the skin, uh, puncture the cells, and also frozen fluids are going to swell. Anything else that's got popped in, particularly a man in a nice bath, it will blister and be very, very uncomfortable. I don't know if you put the drop off. Drop off. Drop off. In order to protect me and my manhood, I was covered in temperature sensors. To be on the safe side, there needs to be an actual thermometer in the car. And this doesn't go on my head. The car got slightly more dignified treatment. And finally, with me wearing just a scarf and a wooden pulley, we were both ready for the big freeze. So they have to monitor the temperature with that. Sorry, you get used to it. You already noticed it. The temperature was a mere minus three, so the evil boffins activated an 80 mile an hour Arctic wind. The market is heating up. Well, no, it's cold. Yeah, give it this. And we need to take this shot and it worked. So far, I'd say we're ready. Just hang on there. The C1 comes with a little socket. You can put a new iPod, and the officer very kindly provided me one. They put some music on it so the noise would go off. Toastier, minus 17 degrees, so surely the engine would start. Battery works. Come on. I'm giving you the best chance. Come on. But there was no pulse. You are out. So I'd already beaten the engine. The reason was I was running on blood, but the car was running on diesel. This is a little beaker of diesel, and look, it's gone goopy and solid because it's so cold. But the contest wasn't over. This was a battle to the finish, and the C1's electrics were still going. However, 
However, the boffins were now starting to get worried about my falling skin temperature. Will you tap away again? Do it that. Sir, it's minus 26 in here now. I wonder if the car battery still works. still worked, just. I was now in the frostbite zone and close to cracking. My brain was so fuggy. It had trouble tackling a simple 11 plus test. The boffins were gonna have to pull me out, but would the car crack first? Right, here we go. Oh. It's, uh... I've had it. Nobody can deny that yeah, Homer never, never, never came to be a polar exploration vehicle. It was kind of the key Superman. It did incredibly well in the end. Oh, it was better. So, so there you are. are. If you, you want, want to drive, drive to the North Pole, buy a hammer. Yes. It was amazing, wasn't it? Yeah, incredible. I mean, it's amazing world. Yeah, it must have been absolutely freezing in there. Either that, or he was a big girl's blouse. Yeah. Anyway, time for our next event. This is speed skating. Which in the proper Olympics involves a lot of men in condoms slithering about. In a race, their hearts beat 200 times a minute and it's all jolly exciting. But we think we could do better. This is our ice skate. The brand new Jaguar XK8. And this is Torville. What the older, fatter Torville is going to be doing is racing this fellow. That is Estil Erdic, and he's the world record holder for the 1500 meters skating quickie thing. Right, it's a 1500 meter race, three laps.
I suspect it was my driving that let the jack down there, because on the face of it, this does seem to be quite a car. Obviously, on snowy roads like these, a car possibly do a proper road test, so will do that back and forth in the spring. But, there are some things that I can tell you now. For instance, it's faster and has two more seats than the new baby Aston. But it costs 15,000 pounds less. For sure, the Astons are good the looking car, but this is this is not what you call a mini, is it? If it was designed by the same man who did the Aston, and if they could use it on the outside, wait till you see the interior. Jags were all full of wood, pipe tobacco. It was like being inside James May. But this one, like being inside James Kirk. It really is a starship in here, and it goes like one too. It really is very quick, or it would be if I had a bit more space to play with. You could have so much fun on this road. Followed by such an enormous accident. So, because it was going dark, which it does every 15 seconds in Norway, I went back to meet James at the hotel. To make a plan. For the next Top Gear Winter Olympic event. You know that Jack? You're not very good at speed skating. Well, I was wondering, how would it be at like off road, slalom, speed dance skating? Well, well, Jeremy, I've, I've no, no idea, idea because there's no, no such thing. thing. But it's just thought of it. What do you mean, okay? You've got no ones to get a great big open area. Like, like friends in there. Perfect. Perfect. And, and then carve a sort of course in it. it. And, and then, then you drive around in it. Yeah, yeah but, but what, what you want then is a four-wheel drive car. car. You don't. You think about it. The lake doesn't freeze like that, does it? It freezes level. There's no thing with penalties. You need four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is what you control in the slippery corners. That's what it's for. That's why rally cars are four-wheel drive. You need four-wheel drive. No, you won't. You will. You won't. And in the morning, after we've had a million more beers on the fruit to you. Fine. You just wait. We've got a long time to be talking in your way. Sometime in the next afternoon, it was morning, and we found the perfect frozen lake. James also found his perfect car, the four-wheel drive Land Rover Discovery. Right, I'm going to build a track, and this is what I've got in mind. It's going to start with a long, sweeping curve where we're going to get carried away and apply the power. I don't know if I'm going to be straight, but there's going to be a series of tightening S's. Where, where Jerry will crash, crash if he's not ready, and then there'll be another sweeping curve, and then there'll be another side, there'll be another series of tightening S's, and then finally, it'll come back, back, back and draw the big curve again. Very good, but what, what James had to realize was that the ice might not be thick enough for the big man to run over. So, at this point, it is three minutes and 20 seconds to go. Do people, people fall through the ice in the way, way on the lakes? lakes. Yes. yes. Often? Often? Too often. 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 Too often.
problems at all. Because it's made from aluminium and therefore weighs about three ounces. Unaware of the problem, Bob the Builder was busy with a tractor carving out a course. Safe, is steady. And it took him two minutes, three seconds. Pathetic. Rubbish, man. It you can hardly him. move it. Rubbish. I was going at a good, consistent speed and in control, which is the point I'm trying to make. You were barely moving. Movement. Nonsense. The, the other disappointment is that you didn't actually fall through the ice. Because do you know how thick it is? Four feet? About five inches. You're kidding. No, it's about five inches. So. How would the rear-wheel drive Jag get on? Oh yeah! With all this space, it was so much easier and faster than it had been either on the ice rink or on the road. The sideways and control looked good.
Chase! Very good. I won! What do you mean you won? I won! No, come on, I went around there in 2 minutes 3 seconds. You were actually 30 seconds behind when you crashed. Look, look, I stance, stance and he's, he's not, not against, against the clock. clock. It's about, it's about point, point and delicacy and beauty. And I was much more. Yes, yes, yes. This, this is, is against, against the clock. clock and it proved that the ball was right to smash two of them. That's the end of it. That was my victory. It's going down. So we don't have any more time to argue. Okay, the thing is, before you became my head of the world of amusing space vegetables, which was how many came to Norway? What's their game? Four, four, eight, eight. eight. Yes, yes, we, we thought, thought we'd show, show to you, to you again. again. Now, now just before, before, go and go get discovery, because I need to pull this out. Can I show, show you something first? first? What, what? Two, two, two were talking, talking about lifted hammers. hammers. You can't, you can't have, have teeth, teeth white. Lily <laughs> <laughs> Hammer has one, one of the most formidable bobsleighers in the world. world. The downhill gore twists and turns stretches for almost two kilometers. is subjected to cornering forces of 5G. That's more than an F1 driver sorted. Honestly, to do this you'd have to be brave, stupid, or just desperate to get on television. So this is where I'll be sitting here in the middle. And to make things even more obvious, we're going to have a race. There, we come to Lily Hammer and go alongside the box they run and have this road. They start in the same place, they run downhill, and they finish in the same place. The road, the road is almost exactly the same length as the Bob Run, and like, and like the Bob Run, it's slippery, dangerous, and full, and full of difficult corners. It, it requires a special, a special vehicle. vehicle. So, so that's what we've got. got. It's, it's a Mitsubishi, Mitsubishi Evo World, World Rally Car with a 300, 300 horsepower turbocharged engine, four-wheel four drive, and studded tires. So that's, so that's the challenge. challenge. Can, can the rally car beat, beat the bobsleigh? I happen to think it can, can although, although Hammond tells me it definitely can't. can't. Now this, now this is my bobsleigh when it starts and it wiggles all the way down here and finishes there. Uh, and this is the road, which is in green, green, and it starts here, and it wiggles all the way up there, but it finishes in exactly the same place. Yes, yes, yes but here's the point. point. My Bob Slate can get from there, there all, all the way down to there, to there in less than a minute. minute. But, you, but see, you see, all you've got, you say, you say you've left there is gravity. Yes, yes that's nothing. Well, I've got 300, 300 horsepower, and a huge turbocharger, and 430 spike in each tire, and gravity, yes, to get down there. But, my bobsleigh was custom built for going on ice. So your cars have to be sort of adapted to cover tires and stuff. You're wearing tights. I can't take lectures on physics from a man in tights. I'm a word of yes. Physics, no. The truth is, though, the Bob is going to be hard to beat, which kind of counts me out for driving a car. So instead, we've got Henning Solberg, the Norwegian National Rally Champion. The bobsleigh's chance of victory all depends on how good our start is. That means intense preparation for me and the Norwegian Olympic bobsleigh team. And while we practice running, the driver visualizes the course in his head. All of this provided much merriment for the Bonai in May. Are you warming up? Yes. I'm, I'm warming up as well. To be honest, I couldn't see the funny side of it because I was really worried about letting the team down. Any time you lose here, a second is multiplied by three. At the bottom, so three, three seconds. And, and I was also worried about whether my body would cope. The key thing is you go into the corners, just, just hold, hold your breath, breath as much breath in as you can, because that actually, actually holds your body up and supports you, support you, you when it's ejected to the duty to the corners. Apparently, a couple of places now that it hits six, six and a half G. Driver Tom has been doing this six, six years and three, three centimeters shorter. Short. I can't believe, I can't believe this is happening. James was strapped in, and, and I was ready, ready to run. run. 
because we can do this. Yes, this is the pitch. And these are the players. Ten Suzuki Swifts, making it five a side. All piloted by local rally managers. James and I would be team captains, and Jeremy the ref. Look, it's not it's difficult. difficult. Ice, ice hockey is basically the most violent sport in the world, bar none. none. So, 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 if you, you buy James, James... Oh, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, if, 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 if there is a debt, then, then you, you, you have to put somebody in the sink. And that's when I blow my horn. Yes, if it all gets really nice. I have to stop the game and blow this. So it's easy. Just, you... The end's come off. With the stands packed to the rafters and the giant puck in place, we were, we ready, were ready for the off. Okay, the blue team. Captain Boy, Captain Slow, and I'm Juan Television. The red team. Captain Boy, Richard Phillips, Scofield Hammond. That's daytime television. We're ready. Daytime TV, TV score. score. <laughs> Is it gold in ice hockey? hockey? Yeah. 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 Football cliches. Oh, he's up like a salmon. Well, the clinic of the old one too. Seems long time to be on the wall. And despite an obviously biased west. We went down to go to two. <laughs> and, and goal, goal three. three in quick, quick success. success. This prime time to now, now then, boys. boys. <laughs> yes, yes, my, my team, team were being trashed. And, and when, when we, we finally, finally did, did score, score. Uh, guess, guess who was otherwise engaged? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 all in all, all, all refs grasped that the, the game, game, game was poor. Was poor. Oh. Why is that? What happened you scored? We have we scored. scored. No, no, I've seen it. Who's the referee? referee. Follow, 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 follow. Did, 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 did he miss the goal? He missed the goal. He missed the goal. He's not scared of goal. Are you prepared to accept my word? Time, 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 time. He scored a superb goal. Yes, I am. Thank you. 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 James, James took immediate to advantage. Come on, boys! Three, 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 three. That's it! That's lovely! Oh. Great, great, come on, make a baby. Come on, come on, come on! That moment's late, James, James crashed into his own man, man, leaving his gold man wide open, open for me. me. Yeah. The violence reached the top of the ice hockey level. Yes, yes, yes. 
But I joined your short list. It was a splash car. We're writing number two on it. As we speak, I'll be back in business with 90 seconds of play left. Each mission you want, I am totally impartial, giving you every possible opportunity. You just, just let me down. Got it. I'm not all too brilliant girl whilst you've been chatting up some Norwegian woman and standing in the bar. Yes, yes, you are. Find time for him to score up to five. Oh, come, oh, come on, on man. man! Come on, you may wait your joy. That's the end of the game, everybody! No matter, no matter. daytime has won, which meant which for James, 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 James there could only, only be one, one post-match post -match drink. drink. So how was the snow? snow? It was gold. It was gold. Thank yeah. you. And that, and gentlemen, that gentleman is how you do that. that. With, with that, 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 I must get I must back to the world of black entertainment. Or wouldn't if I were you? Because of what we're doing next. next. That, that. Oh, you oh, are JJ King. I am staying. <laughs> This is the ski jump at Lillehammer, the very one used in the 1994 Winter Olympics. It offers jumpers 400 feet of pure, unbridled terror. Right, chaps, we have got to get that. To jump, to jump further than him, in, in the top, the top gear, gear, Winter Olympic ski slash car, car jumping champion. champion. Hmm, a 20-year-old, slightly rusty, Leyland Mini. So let's so work this out. Mini, Mini does, does not 60 in what? About 14, 14 seconds. seconds. Well, well, hang on, that's not going to be very relevant, is it? Because you're not going to get, not gonna get any drift off the tires. All you've got to do is gravity. Oh, I know gravity is a cruel and unpredictable mistress, so... Well, no, it isn't. It's a constant all over the world. But this is quite simple, actually. You've got... It's V equals U plus AT. You know what? Acceleration with gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. But that's weight component down the plane, because it's on a slope. So we need to get the mass of the car and meet the angle of the slope. Then we need to work out also the angle when it gets the lit, the lit jump, jump, and that will give us V, V will follow us on a parabolic trajectory. We should be able to aim for that, exactly, 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 exactly when, when the car comes and meets the meet, 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 We should go and get a cup of tea and work that out. So come on, James. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Is gravity going to be enough to get the car down the ramp and beat the skier? No, no. Right, right. They're wrong. They're wrong. They're wrong. <laughs> we need some more propulsion because we can't the use the engine. Because that, because that will just spin the wheels. Right. right. Also, also, we can't, we can't put, put a driver in it because obviously he'll be killed. So we're going so to have to work something out on the steering that will be your job, okay? okay. This okay. is the problem. Once, Once it's set, it's set off, off, we've got to stop it at some point. Otherwise, it'll just soar over there and take out Lily. So I'll work out where to stop him. Right, guidance for you. Stop it. Braking for you. And then, and then I'll figure out some way of the power. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's get about our business. Yeah. Right. I'll take my tea. Earl Grey in Norway. Whoever would have thought that? Our first job was to mark the point where the skier had landed, so we knew the distance to beat. Unfortunately, James was no Sir Edmund Hillary. <laughs> There you go, I've done it. No, no, you've got to go to the cross the whole way. No, that'll do. It won't do. Shut up. Shut up. 
This way is Hammond, Hammond, Hammond has to think, think big. 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 Ah. Richard, Richard Hammond, Hammond, how's the how's breaking, breaking going? going? Well, well, it's going, well, it's going well. well. By this By stage, stage Spider-Man Spider finally, finally got to the top, top of the ski, ski jump. jump. When the when skier, skier goes, goes down, down, how does he, how does he, how does he, how does he, how does he how stay, does he in, stay the in the middle? Oh, in, oh, in hands and hands and drag, drag. Groove, groove. Liquid mush is off side. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's got the oxygen. oxygen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then the bottom end. Fuel, fuel, fuel. Here's, Here's a tip. Please, Please. I'm a structural engineer in twice. If you use water as fuel, you're not going to go as far as you use oxygen. 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 Stonefield was building the great wall of Lily Hammer. 
the rocket car primed with one and a half tons of explosive blasts began its long journey to the top of the jump. And half an hour later, the ice creams were ready for Chris Bonington's approval. Please, please come near me. Go over there. I'm nowhere near. That's really nice. That's really nice. Really nice. This has never this been done before. No, no. We are in fact on the cutting edge of cocky gobbles. The time for cocky gobbles was over. over. The, wall the wall was finished. 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 The target, the target was, laid was laid down. down. Sort of. Sort of. And we were now in the hands, the hands of the rocket, the rocket man. man. Satisfied with that, and anyway, that's it. I have to go. I have to go back to the world of daytime television. Boys, it's been a joy. It's been great having you here. Thanks for coming. Quite exciting. Bye. Actually, we can go anyway because it's the end. No, it isn't. There's one more thing. This is a swimmer. It's a sort of jet ski with a track on the back, and it's used for hurting moves. Them generally in large bands. But here's the thing: no one in the whole of human history has ever attempted to ride one of these things down a ski jump. Now the reason why no one has ever ridden a snowmobile down a ski jump like that is the same reason we didn't put anyone in the mini last night. Probably killed to death. Yeah, very good chance of that. Luckily, however, we know a man who has no fear. You thought we'd forgotten him, but he's here. He's here. The stick. The stick. It's the landing. It's the landing. I'm worried about those that voice we've all heard. <laughs> No slowing up here on BBC Two High Octane Quiz Comedy with some crazy driving thrown in next as actors Philip Blunister and Hugo Spear join Neil Morrissey for a brand new show, Petrolheads, next.